They haven't at all. It takes several years for implementation of biological control. Because now that we have found them, we need time to even develop the mass rearing systems. We need time to develop the release systems and all those things. So I, I don't expect that we will start releasing natural enemies within the next two years. In a minimum of five years, yes, we can start releasing natural enemies. But in the meantime, we must focus on what is working now as we develop the bio-rational uh, methods. This means that farmers would have to rely on chemicals to manage the pest until the plant protection and regulatory service directory complete the laboratory analysis and running of the natural enemies. Director of Plant Protection and Regulatory Service Directory, Dr. Ansar Amprofi, says the directory has, however, outlined measures to manage the pest while awaiting for natural enemies. We have outlined certain measures the short-term, medium-term, and the long-term measures. And uh, at, uh, when we have outbreak situations, we usually rush for the short-term, which is the use of the pesticides. And uh, this year, we are concentrating on the use of bio-rational pesticides, as those that are not synthetic. Long-term control, we are planning to use bio-agents or natural enemies. They are natural enemies to the armyworm and we also call them bio-agents. Five of the natural enemies have been identified here in Ghana after months of so far, scouting. So able to identify five in the country. Five. Yes, of these bio-agents or natural enemies. And we are going to analyze issues, reel them in the lab, and with the help of the universities, the researchers who are here present will come out with one that can be very effective for the control in Ghana. So if you're able to get the one that is very effective for the control in Ghana, then we will rear it, mass rear it, and then release. We release it onto the fields. And uh, we are planning to release during the minor season when the fall armyworm is more on the alternative host and the people will not be spraying so that they can really uh, multiply and then when the maize is cultivated, they can go onto the maize field and then they attack the fall armyworm. This is a, uh, a measure that is being used in uh, Brazil, Mexico and other places and it's very effective. So we are looking for a long-term measure which will not involve the use of uh, synthetic pesticides. But pesticide scientist Dr. Harry Sintim wants to know whether these natural enemies identified can control the fall armyworm. Mofa, Mofa has been discovering some of these natural enemies by accident. They've been monitoring the fall armyworm with traps. And some of these traps have been catching the natural enemies. And they think those natural enemies are, are potential natural enemies. For now, they've not tried them. They are known potential, uh, they are known natural enemies. These are insects which we all know in the, in the textbook as natural enemies. But as to whether they can control the fall armyworm, we've not done that research yet. Because you need to rear them. Rare natural enemies, you have to know their, their food. It's very expensive to culture them into high numbers before you release them. Okay, so, although MOFA has identified some of these natural enemies on the field, real research as to whether they can control the fall armyworm has not been done. For him, Ghana could have saved the sweat if authorities at the Plant Protection and Regulatory Service Directory had contacted the Americans for the natural enemies. For instance, when the Popo millibag became a problem, it is the FAO who sponsored the PPRSD to go for a natural enemy in the Southern America and brought it to Ghana. So one way that we can also go for natural enemies is we can do exploration. There are natural enemies in Brazil and Mexico. We, will have to, we can go and bring them because at that place, they are already rearing them. So their rearing media is known. The only thing left is how they will survive in our environment. That's exactly what the director said earlier. Yes. So there was no need for them to go there. Anymore. We have not tried them. We have not tried them. We will need, and in fact, for those in Brazil and Mexico, they have several of them. We may not even go for the major ones. We may, it's possible the minor ones there will become major natural enemies here. Okay, and this all involves money, you know. So, because the classical uh, biological control or natural enemy is to do exploration. 
you would have to go to places where uh, these have been already been used before. Try them first before you try your native ones. They are environmental conditions are a bit different from ours and then there's uh, the type the natural enemy we really have to acclimatize to the area so if you just go and bring one from outside and then decide to use it it may not function as it's functioning in the uh, other country it could become even a it can even parasite, uh, parasitize on what we have already here, and that's going to create a big problem for us. President of the Entomological Society of Ghana, Dr. Maxwell Osai, however, commends effort undertaken by the directorate, but raises concerns why MOFA failed to involve them in research and decision making. And I think entomologists have been relegated to the background for a long time. So when pest issues come up, they, they, call, they call social political commentators to talk about it rather than calling the experts who are the entomologists. And I can't fault anybody because the entomologists have not uh, made our voice heard over a long time. But as we are, we are trying to organize, reorganize the Entomological Society of Ghana, and uh, with the dynamic people we have at the helm of affairs, they will be hearing a lot more about the entomologists in this country. Currently, there are 80 active entomologists in Ghana, and Dr. Michael wants them to deliver as much as they could to change the trend in the area of pest evasion and control. Mahmoud Mohamed Nuruddin reporting.